All right, as I mentioned at the top of the show, Australian researchers are developing 3D molecular structures of the coronavirus with the technology expected to assist in fast-tracking the development of a vaccine. Professor Andrew Peel is director of the Australian Synchrotron. It's based in Clayton, Melbourne, the Synchrotron. Wait till he tells you what it is. He joins me now live via Skype. Professor Peel, great to have you on the show. I really appreciate your time. I know you're doing really uh, critical work for the country and the world right now. Before we get into some detail, tell us what this Synchrotron is for people at home and how it works. Happy to, and uh, thanks for having me, Peter. Um, a synchrotron is, uh, at its heart, it's a giant particle accelerator, and we use that particle accelerator to make intensely powerful beams of light. They're millions of times brighter than the sun. And with those beams of light, we can shine a light uh, on samples to probe them in all sorts of ways. And in its broad context, the Australian synchrotron which is owned and operated by one of Australia's great research agencies, ANSTO, uh, provides research services uh, to people from researchers from all around the country, things as varied as uh, minerals, mining, uh, health sciences, uh, looking at artworks, uh, looking at food nutrition, all of these sorts of things. But tonight what we're talking about is how we're playing a role in supporting researchers in looking at the building blocks uh, of coronavirus, which are proteins. Right now, we've got some images there of the synchrotron. It's about the size of the MCG, so it's it's huge in scale. It's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. You're right, ANSTO, which runs a number of uh, Commonwealth science uh, facilities, is also the, the sort of lead or parent uh, body that runs this synchrotron. You're the head of it, you're the director. Give me a sense what what does it we've seen pictures and they're on most news reports every night of what the coronavirus looks like it's a corona named i presume because it's a spherical shape what makes it different from other viruses like say sars which is quite related to this virus so coronavirus has a, a really cunning ability to be able to get into the body and to spread itself um it's it's got aspects that are like some of the other viruses that we're familiar with in the, in the way that it gives us flu-like symptoms. Um, but I think the key thing about coronavirus is that it's not something that we currently have immunity to. And the race is on around the world to understand, and you can see the pictures there, the components uh, of the coronavirus. Uh, and those components, as I mentioned, are the building blocks of the coronavirus are individual proteins. And the way that researchers work with the Australian synchrotron is to identify those individual proteins uh, and ship them to us. Uh, once they're with us, we can uh, shine our X-ray beams on them uh, and very, very rapidly uh, give an exquisite three-dimensional picture of the shape and, and structure and the individual arrangement of the atoms in each of those proteins. Now, why do you want to do that? You want to do that because if you understand the structure of a protein, then you can understand how to interact with it. And if you're building a vaccine or if you're building a drug uh, to cure the disease, uh, then having that knowledge gives scientists a great leg up uh, on, on that race. OK, so I've had it explained to me that, that because it has this protein structure around the edges, if you, if you want to create a vaccine, you've got to make sure that the vaccine can attach to the proteins. And it's a bit like the coronavirus uh, being the sort of the edge of a lock and the, the vaccine being a key. You've got to be able to make sure the vaccine's so developed and we're all in a race to get the vaccine, can actually get inside the coronavirus molecule and unlock it all. So the, the way a vaccine works is that it trains the body's immune system to respond to unwanted pathogens like the coronavirus. Uh, and so the way that vaccines work is that they train the, the immune response uh, by exposing the body to parts of the pathogen. And what researchers are trying to do is understand which of those parts to involve or include uh, in the development of a vaccine. So you're absolutely right. Um, you want the body's uh, own proteins to lock in and recognise uh, those components and trigger the immune system so that it can function better. And the work that we're doing uh, is helping researchers understand how best to tailor those vaccines uh, to come up with new vaccines, but also because we're already seeing vaccines out there being trialled, 
to understand how those vaccines work so that we can develop the best vaccines and, importantly, the safest vaccines that we can then distribute to the general population. All right, well, two quick questions from me. Uh, who are you working with uh, on this project, Australian researchers or, or, and or abroad researchers from overseas? And how far away, you know, what's your best case scenario in terms of vaccine? Uh, how, how likely is it it could be within, you know, by the end of the year? Or is it going to be too hard to tell at this stage? So I'll take the second one first. Um, if I had that crystal ball, I'd be uh, investing in all, in all the companies involved in the stock market. Um, so right I think answer. the short answer is nobody <laughs> knows. Uh, but uh, I think it is definitely safe to say that with facilities like Anstow's Australian Synchrotron, we can work with research groups from around the world uh, and Australia to accelerate the um, progress of solving this disease. So in answer to your first question then, Yes, they are researchers from around the world, so we are having samples shipped to us from researchers overseas. One of the great things about running a facility like this that's been so well supported by the research community and by governments uh, is that we are one of the best at what we do in the world. So people choose us uh, as a reliable place to solve these problems that they have. The other component is the Australian research community is spectacular in this space. So we've got some of, if not the leading uh, researchers in immunology and related fields. And these are the people you want working around the clock in their own research institutions. So we're dealing, uh, in fact, the Synchrotron deals with practically every research institution in the country that does work of this type. Well, congratulations on what you've done so far. I've got your minister up next and she's got a science background. I'm sure she's going to second all of those comments. Uh, good luck for the months and weeks ahead, the weeks and months ahead. Professor Andrew Peel, I really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you very much.